Our next question is What are the errors in leveling? Improper adjustment of level gives you a parallelix error. And the next error will be the Earth's curvature. Atmospheric refraction can also be an error in leveling. Variation in temperature can cause errors in leveling. Staff if not held vertically, then that leads to an error. Faulty turning points will lead to error in leveling. Settlement of tripod and bubble, if it is not in the center, then these will form a majority of errors in leveling. So these are the errors that could possibly occur while you perform leveling in your survey. Moving on to our next question we have. The question asks, how earthwork required is calculated using contours? The answer is for computation of earthwork areas cross section of successive are considered. So the average area is obtained by multiplied by the space between your cross section and this gives the volume of earthwork. For this trapezoidal or prismoidal rules can be used. So this is how earthquake is calculated using contours. Moving on to our next question we have. The question is, explain the object of preparing a contour map. Generally, Topography of an area is depicted by a contour which are very useful in various engineering projects. As a matter of fact, every civil engineering work has to be started with a contour map. So the contour maps are prepared for the alignment of highway, railway, waterway, sewer line etc and to decide the catchments area of the reservoir and the location of a dam or reservoir for these purposes we can use contour maps so that is the objective of preparing a contour map Our next question is, define the term contour line. If you see, the contour line is an imaginary outline of the terrain and it is obtained by joining its points of equal elevation. So the contour line is obtained by joins the points of equal elevation. So here if you see you can have this many amount of contour lines by joining the points. Our next question is define latitude and departure. If you see latitude of a line is the distance measured parallel to the north south line. Similarly the distance measured parallel to your east-west line is your departure. So, latitude maps on to north-south line and your east-west line is mapped on to departure.
is your radius bearing of the line and the length of the line are known then the latitude and the departure can be computed so that is latitude and departure moving on to our next question a question is what is transit rule in theodolite traversing the angular measurements are more accurately done compared to that of linear measurements the transit rule is applicable only in such situations so as per this rule the correction to latitude or departure is considered as a factor of latitude or departure of the side instead of the length of the side accordingly the transit rule is a total error in latitude correction to departure so your transit rule is nothing but the correction to latitude or departure Our next question is what is bowditch rule Bowditch rule is nothing but the rule that is applied for the corrections in latitude and departure As per this rule the error is proportional to the length of the side Therefore the corrections to the latitude and departure are given as closing error in the latitude so this forms your bowditch rule a next question is how traversing is done by adopting included angle method adopting included angle method may be used for open traverse and closed traverse it is more suitable for closed traverse although the traverse may be done in clockwise or anti clockwise direction so for closed traverse the traverse is generally taken in anti clockwise direction so it is necessary to note down whether the angle is an interior angle or an exterior angle so that is how traversing is done by adopting your induced angle method our next question is what is prismoidal correction for trapezoidal rule if you see the general volumes of successive areas are found on an average of the end areas and the prismoidal correction prismoidal correction is detected from the volume computed using the average end areas Our next question is state simpson's rule and what are the limitations simpson's rule states that the boundaries between the ordinates are assumed to an arc of parabola so The rule states that the boundaries between the ordinates are assumed to be an arc of parabola. So the limitation of this rule is that it can be applied when the number of ordinates is odd. So that is your Simpson rule and the limitation 
is that it can be used only when the number of ordinates is odd. Our next question is, how area is calculated from a plan by dividing into squares? The answer is a square chart of convenient size is plotted on a tracing paper with each square representing a definite area namely a centimeter or a square meter. The tracing paper is placed on the drawing sheet. The number of full squares are first counted. The portion of the squares on the boundary are broken which are then estimated in terms of fractional squares. So that is how the area is calculated from a plan by dividing into squares and then calculating the number of full squares and the portion of the squares on the boundary which are broken. Our next question is, what is a compound curve? When a curve consists of more than one radius connecting two intersecting straights, it is called to be a compound curve. The direction of the change of the curve will be on the same side for a compound curve. Our next question is what is reverse curve? When two curves of different or equal radii are bending in opposite directions then it is called as your reverse curve. So this will be your reverse curve and they are bending in opposite directions as you can see. Our next question is what is root surveying? Root surveying is applied to the surveys required to establish the horizontal and vertical alignments for transport facilities. The transport facilities includes highways, railway, aqueducts, canals, water pipeline, oil, gas line, cableways, sewage disposal, power, telephone and transmission lines. So these are the facilities which uses road surveying. Our next question is, what is the main requirement of idle transition curve? The main requirement of an idle transition curve is that the super elevation should be increased in formal with the increase of your centrifugal force at a constant rate. So by doing this, you get your idle transition curve. Curve. Our next question is What are the functions of a transition curve? The following are the functions of a transition curve. If you see The functions should in introduce super elevation gradually and they should maintain a constant proportionality between super elevation and change of curvature. They should minimize wear and tear on rail section and wheels, vehicle tires and they should also eliminate derailment 
or overturning of the train so these are the purpose of transition curve thank you so much for joining gtech on survey interview questions hope you would have got an idea about surveying